Yay. All right, cool. Hey, that, hey. that was good. <laughs> All right, today it's me and Bandit Lou. Uh, <laughs> no Forestine today. Forestine's got uh, some uh, <laughs> teeth to worry about. All right, let's see. This is Bandit Lou. I'm Hex7. This is What the Heck. What do we talk about? Modular and sometimes other stuff. Um, yeah, Bandit Lou, uh, who are you and what, what's the last CD you listened to in your car? Oh boy. Um, so I make music, I guess. Uh, I make, um, you know, under Bandit Lou, um, is an alias that I kind of make a lot of ambient music on. Um, I've been producing music for a little over 10 years now. And, um, you know, Eurorack was a nice transition to kind of get away from beats. You know, I made beats for like 10 years and kind of got bored of it and was trying to find something new. And now, you know, spending a lot of money on modular. <laughs> so um, it's been fun. Um, and the last CD, man, I haven't really been driving a lot, but let me look on my phone, actually. So I've been listening to this guy called Douglas Dare. Have you heard of him, Douglas Dare? No, Douglas Dare. I want to add that to my watch. He's. Do Do you know James Blake? Are you familiar with yeah, James Blake? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a more, um, less crazy version of James Blake's old stuff. But it's, it's it's very good. I mean, it's melancholy, you know, down-tempo type stuff, but it's good vibes, you know? That's so rad. that's basically, basically what I've been listening to and just zoning out on. That's yeah, it. check them out. I mean, I will. That's the exact genre I've been working to lately, just listening to, and uh, it's fun to make that kind of music. So that's perfect. Um, my last CD that I listened to in a car, I think, well, it depends on the car. I think it's either, in my car, there's a DEF CON soundtrack from a couple of years ago uh, mm -hmm. in there. And that one's got a, a mix of artists. So you've got like some nerdcore in there and some like Manson sounding stuff. Um, mm -hmm the full range but there's also like some puzzles in there so like halfway through there's like beeping or uh a small child counting um and things like okay. that so it's super annoying when you're trying to listen to it but i i haven't taken the time to swap it out and the other one i think in in kia's car is like like a uh adele i want to say or maybe Sia. okay one of those two both you know i've been i've good. also been revisiting like you know a lot of you know, Marilyn Manson and Korn. I recently got back into Korn and just listening to them as, you know, an adult. You know, it's, you know, it's interesting because, like, you know, I, you know, maybe I didn't listen to, pay attention to the other bands at that time, but, you know, listening back, it sounds like they were really ahead of their time and, like, just, like, the production and everything i was like oh you know a lot of like little clever things um you know that they were doing that you know maybe i you know because i was a kid i was like in fourth grade or something like that like i can't remember <laughs> you know the intricacies of all, all the the music at that time but you know i think you know i felt like they held you know held up well over time and you know it still riles me up you know it's nice <laughs> Actually, yeah, Corn is one of my favorites uh, to go back and listen to. Manson too, I've been listening to a lot of, which is which is um, interesting because I didn't listen to Manson a lot uh, when it was popular. I guess I mean, it's probably still popular, um, but I think both of those bands perfectly uh, capture. I don't know what to call it, like they never felt metal to me. Like they do have their metal moments or like all yeah. rock moments or whatever. It felt more like uh, 
like electronic dance music with like a heavier vibe almost like everything you can really like bob your head to except yeah definitely tempo stuff uh yeah it's so I, um, yeah <laughs> they're rad i mean i think that's why they help that they're holding up over time because it's you know it's not the typical genres that i mean i guess back then there were like you know alternative type stuff you know um but i mean i guess it's just good songwriting you know it's like the lyrics and everything and just yeah the arrangement you know if you want to get stuff done and just put on some corn and just you know chug away it's uh yeah it's fun music's I awesome i love music yeah it's great i don't know if you have the chat open but enthusiastic electrons just said uh no, they shot it. an interview with Korn at their space in LA and there was lots of black velvet and sad clown paintings which now now we gotta get enthusiastic electrons on here at some point <laughs> to talk about that because holy crap that seems like a good story oh that's um, awesome yeah wait I'm opening up the We're chat now. Down right now yeah man can you hop on right now let's uh let's talk about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> If anyone that's watching wants to hop on, fire me a DM in a Discord and I'll send you a link. All you need are a microphone, headphones, and probably Chrome. Uh, <laughs> that's so cool. Black Velvet and Sad Clowns. Um, Actually, um, you know, on the topic of like clowns, I last night I went down a rabbit hole on um, it's like America's got talent where um the x factor and i was just watching and i guess so there's like this dude that dressed up like a clown but he's just like a phenomenal singer and it's just like really it's really amazing i, I forget his name it's like uh pudding or something like that yeah or, or, or pudding's I, pity party yeah yeah pudding's pity party i've seen those youtube videos not, i mean not for a while but like it's extremely good music with this really yeah. freaking surreal clown <laughs> yeah and it's down the leads but it was like yeah i just went i was like watching like two hours of just like i think i started off with like oh see simon cry and i was like oh, i wonder what it is and it's just like really just sad <laughs> sad stories then a really sad song and i was like oh man it's like <laughs> that was good <laughs> that was good and then before i knew it was like you know 1 a.m i was like i, I should probably go to bed <laughs> Those are the YouTube rabbit holes I've been falling into. Like, I've been careful about it. Like, a video will pop up. It'll be like, Circle of Fists. And I'll be like, do I really want YouTube to recommend Circle of Fists for the next six weeks for me? Like, every video. That... Anyway, that's that's yeah. the stuff, the rabbit hole I get down. The, al the algorithms, man, they, they get you. <laughs> and I'm aware of it. It's like instant. Like, I know this video is going to make me laugh. But if I click it... I'm going to get a whole world yeah, of videos that I'm, I'm not ready for yet. Uh, yeah, Puddle's Pity Party. Uh, thanks, Voices from Beyond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so what I had planned to talk about this week with Alex was the, the Metropolix and the Strega. And I kind of want to wait on the Metropolix because he seems pretty stoked about it, unless you want to talk about it. Um, I don't know about it. I know about the Strega um, at the last Seattle Modular um, streaming event. Um, one of the guys, the podcasting guy, um, Tim, I think I forget his name, but he played um, he played a set with it, and it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, let's talk about Strega because uh, it's something that super piqued my interest, not just because of the collaboration collaboration with make noise and alessandro but just sort of the form factor what's in it and how it works like um and the relation to the to the stuff i have behind me like the delay in it mm -hmm. is this like pretty typical i want to say crappy like karaoke delay i think is what it was made for um and it's the pt 2339 and the only reason I know that is because um, I built a module, a look moment, the computer module, the uh, the triple splashback, which has three of those things inside of it, like chained into the into each other. And so 
this, when this when the Strega appeared, I was like, holy crap, I already have that. Like, I have it ready to go. Mine, like, it gets super noisy. Um, mm-hmm. And one of the quirks about the chip is if you, uh, yeah, foresting, they do cool stuff. Like, this, this particular chip, if you lower, like, I guess if you increase the delay time too long, it turns into, like, super gnarly, heavy noise. Um, like, almost self... Yeah, it doesn't even sound like the usual feedback you get when you turn it way up. It's it's like a crunchiness. Like, let me see. Uh, I think that's just the... So there's no delay yet. And this is with the delay. But if I turn it down, you'll start to hear. Like really crazy. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it gets like way gnarlier than I think even the Strega uh, has out of the box, which got me thinking about uh, attenuverters or or, ad- or doing this, uh, changing the control voltage of it so that it can go lower than it was intended to, like add extra negative or positive voltage, and you can maybe get into some of that really gnarly stuff uh, yeah. with Strega too. Uh, little angel chorus has loads of easy mods. Yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> Um, Benjamin is a yeah that's that's I definitely plan to make at least one more PT2399 module of some sort probably not another triple splashback because uh, I don't need uh, I want I want something a little bit different sounding than that it's that one's an intense reverb uh, yeah very cool um, but the form factor of the Strega like is it is it Eurorack size I don't think it is I feel, I feel like it's a little bit taller I thought it was just in, it's like the, um, you know, it's like the controller that they co- that they came out with too, and the Zero right. Coast. Right. It, it's can, zero can Zero Coast, coast can, can that be racked into um, a case? I'm going to throw that question out to Benjamin. I feel like Benjamin would know the answer to that, but I, I don't think either of those can, which is why I was interested in that format, because now you've got the No Coast, the No Control, and the Strega. Um, yeah. At a graph, it, it's no coast size, but I don't think those like I don't think you can pull them out and put them into a. Uh, Are they three U? It takes it work quick. to rack them. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Which is an interesting choice. Like, that's so so strange to me. Uh, well, I get going you smaller, know what? But I think it's they're doing something cool. I mean, I think it's similar to, like, um, you know, Roland doing, like, the boutique line and everything. And I think it's just making um, the platforms a little more accessible, um, you know, instead of, you know, trying to find a case and, um, you know, power supply and all that stuff. They just have, you know, it, it's basically, um, whatchamacallit, a, a, a semi-modular. But in, in uh, the make noise case, they're separate module so you don't really have to put in the work to and it's not even work it's just like you know it's just easier to get into for other people and um i think that's pretty cool you know yeah and they seem to sort of play well with these other semi-modular instruments that are are becoming quite popular right now um like the mm-hmm. no control i think is the one i'm the most excited about just because like yeah often do interesting controllers come out like <laughs> and I think the form factor of the controller is cool because you can kind of, you can move it around, you know, essentially it's like if I were to build, you know, another skiff with controllers, you know, I just put all the controllers on one skiff and then, you know, you can kind of bring it to any, um, any sort of setup you want and it's always just going to be there. And I think the, the make noise controller kind of gives you that, so... But uh, I think that, yeah, the only turnoff for me is that I, 
I'm running out of outlets, so I can't, <laughs> I can't plug in enough stuff. So. Yeah, there's a reason that uh, that other case is dim right now. I'm also Not out of power. I'm out of power. Well, I think it's to the point where if I plug it in, like oscillators go down a few cents, kind of a thing. So yeah, uh, need to figure out a different way to get power <laughs> into this. Room. Yeah. Um, and yeah. on top of that, it's like you want you want something clean too. Right, if if you, or you you want to try to eliminate the ground loop. I think ground loops are just the bane of anyone who makes music at home. Oh my gosh, yeah. And when I, yeah, I've got these. Uh, well, I don't know where it is right now, but I've got these little ground loop like USB things because I find the USB powered devices are the most prone to ground loops. And so I've got this like ground loop isolator thing, and they're the cheap ones from, you know, it's probably the same on Amazon and wherever else. Uh, but I think one out of like three don't work. Uh, so right now I have ground loop happening with my, with yeah. my uh, one of my devices that's off right now. So there's I like another option you can try is I actually have like little, just like the battery packs, like the lithium ion battery packs, like I have. Um, what you would call it, like the the touch control thing, like the touche. I don't know how they want to pronounce it, but if I plug in the USB, there's just like um, just an annoying, you know, hum to it. So I just, you know, I just plug in like a battery pack and just power power it through that, and it it clears it. So you know, that's an alternative. And also, what there's like this uh, VST called Sound Soap. So if you're mixing and you want to bounce everything, yes. there's a VSC sound soap and it just it'll take it out um, for you. Yeah, sound soak's incredible. Uh, yeah. yeah, I haven't had to use it too much because I I don't care too much right now. Like I I've had I've, I've got my noise floor pretty low at this point, which I'm I'm stoked yeah. about. But like if I crank the volume way up, you can hear like alien radio or something. <laughs> I don't know what to do, but it's all coming from the the drum brute impact somehow. There's a ground oh, yeah. going on there, and it's not USB powered, so. Uh, yeah, I think just some points. modules. Yeah, just some modules. I think just, you know, yeah, they're just dirty, I guess. Oh yeah. Nothing you do and, about it. <laughs> and I'm not sure. Uh, so on mine, they're Cosmo built by me, right? look more in a computer style um, and that means uh, the frame I built is all like wooden rails and everything and I think mm -hmm. on uh, some Eurorack modules they rely on the, the the metal case as a ground connector so <laughs> yeah. I'm completely without that and so far I haven't seen to have too much trouble uh, I thought I had a bad problem earlier but it was just uh, the morphogene doing its thing yeah <laughs> yeah it's just uh, I mean even like my my MacBook you know like the aluminum MacBook um, yeah. like a few years back I was like recording something I was making like a YouTube video and it picked up the the MacBook itself picked up like the CD radio of like the cops that were on their beat around like uh, around Brooklyn and I was like oh like you know, I, I didn't hear it while I was you know doing the video, but it picked it up, um, you know, in the final recording. So, I mean, yeah, it's like just like excess, you know, noise and ground loops. It just, sucks. Yeah, it's yeah. just it is what it is, and uh, I think I would be the most frustrated if I was doing something with quite a lot of silence uh, mm -hmm. in, in 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 there. Um, I just usually do crappy, noisy stuff, so it doesn't matter too much to me. But uh, yeah, ground loops are are some of those gremlins you just can't get rid of all the time. Yeah, um, that's why I add noise in all my tracks in the final mix, just to, <laughs> just to raise the raise the noise floor, so it just blurs every you know all that other crap out. <laughs> yeah, sound sucks great, but it's just better to add a noise floor. Yeah, just make yeah, it exactly. 
part of the lo-fi lo-fi genre i guess you know yeah uh i saw one of your sets uh i think you you streamed at some weird time i don't i missed it but i saw a replay of it and i was like holy crap that is awesome so i'm probably going to be watching a lot of your stuff uh, it was from a few nights ago i think okay it was like a piano one i i it was um it was like really dark uh, give me a second. I can actually tell you because uh, YouTube history. Yeah, I just recently I've been just, I don't know. I just check if anyone's streaming and I was like, ah, I feel like streaming. And I just, no schedule, really. It's just fun to do, you know. It might have been, uh... oh, shoot. No, it was the one, uh, From the twenty first, it's not dark. It. It's lit. You can see the grand grandmother in the background. The twenty first. Let me just see which one it was. I'm just copying the link and dropping it to you in this little fancy chat thing. Okay. That one. Oh, this one. <laughs> Yeah, that one was pretty rad, so I'll probably be going back. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, that one, yeah, I was just trying to use um, the the Renee sequencer. Mm -hmm. It's really fun, um, but it's like I've been trying really hard to like crank out, you know, more chords. I mean, I... I've been having like a difficult time trying to just like make it work with my music. So I rarely use it. And I think that stream was just like an exercise of me trying to get it to work. And then Morphogene is just there to kind of make things sound better overall. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was fun. Yeah, Morphogene is... I think it's the only module I have that I'm just not clicking with right now. But it... It does such a good job sometimes that I, I have a hard time wanting to get rid of it because like it can make things really interesting or really pretty like instantly like yeah. you just leave record on and you've got this absolutely insane uh, delay thing do you, do you automate it with um, like any sequencer or a clock like yeah, I use so I have MP. in the past yeah okay yeah, so yeah. I've got a MIDI CV thing, so I, 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 I do occasionally sequence it, particularly treating it like a uh, voice, right? Like I'll sequence the start of it, that kind of thing. Yeah, because like you can, yeah, with, with all the CV inputs, like I use Tempe and there's, um, you know, six channels on there. And I'll just put it into each one. You know, you, you might, um, I, I use like a, a mult to kind of split some of them up, but yep. it's... Um, you know, to make it loop correctly, you actually have to, like, divide the clock, like, pretty intensely. So, it's you know, it's not always recording, like, on every on every hit. Right. Um, so, that's, like, a way to make it work a little better. And, I mean, I think I, I can see where you're coming from. Like, I'm having a hard time with Morphogene where everything is starting to sound the same to me. It's, like, everything I feed into it, I don't know, it's just like, all right, it literally kind of spits out something. I mean, it still sounds cool, you know, don't get me wrong, but to me, it's like, all right, I want to do something a little different, and I'm having trouble trying to get, like, that different type of sound from it. Yeah, I tend to fall in the, the trap of it, of either getting, like, wall of granular synthesis sound from it, or, mm -hmm. like, uh, more often than not, sort of sparkly, like, when I crank up the, uh, when I crank up the morph all the way, that kind of a thing, where you get the stereo. Um, and that's, that's mm -hmm. something I do like to do, because my setup doesn't have uh, a lot of stereo right now, so it's kind of fun to just add that every once in a while to add some depth to your head um yeah but but those are the two things i fall into and i have tried turning it into more of an instrument like volt per octave and it definitely is doable but is super duper finicky like yeah uh, i was hoping that would be something that i could set up and then feed some different sounds in 
do a quick tune and then also have like a new instrument right and that's not the case <laughs> yeah i mean i i think there's like three settings really that i set it at it's either all the way clockwise all the way counterclockwise or i set it to green where it's just like at the you know the same pitch and uh, yeah you know, it's hard. And you know, what's annoying with the morphogene too is that it's like that that zero the um, the datum, I guess. You know, for for that that green thing, it's just like so small, and it's you know, if you bump it, like it's so easily to like bump it off of that that green that green uh, setting. Yeah, and that's I why they do that. <laughs> I don't know. They should have they should have made it a little wider there. But the the one that really gets me is the octave down. I think it's white uh like yeah you just go down one octave that one i i can i can't do it if i want to <laughs> it's only ever on accident um, yeah <laughs> it's so finicky and uh yeah i've been debating popping the, the knob off and putting as big of a knob on it as i can just to get me oh yeah so you can get like much more control yeah i mean if they notched it i think if they had like just like a set notch that would have been that would have been really I almost feel like the green moves a little bit, but maybe that's just me. I mean, it could, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like yeah. it's so fine, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's still, I mean, it's still off the module, like for, um, oh, what delay are you using? I I use the Mimeophone. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's a fun delay. That's one of the modules. Like, I'm considering selling the Morphogene and swapping it out for something, and that's on the list of, of things I might swap it for. Yeah, the Mimeophone is really fun. I mean, I, I think they work nicely together, actually. It really opens up the Morphogene, and, you know, you don't have to rely on the Morphogene of doing, like, the the repeats. If you just send it to the Mimeophone and just crank up the, um, the feedback a little bit, you know, it kind of does its own thing and then you'll kind of get more of like a play between the two instead of just feeding the signal into Mimeophone and just, you know, having one route that kind of plays well together. Yeah, and that's probably my issue is I usually just send uh, a boring signal of some sort and like like enthusiastic is, uh, no, Benjamin, yeah, you should feed microphone into Morphogene. I don't feed microphones into it usually. I, I, I do uh, piezo. Well, I guess piezos are microphones, right? But I do it from uh, like ears modules. Like I've, I've strapped a piezo to my ukulele and gone like that into yeah. Morphogene with the twinkly setting. It's just dreamy. Can't beat yeah. that. Uh, and some other things like that. I, I also have this little uh, uh, music box module that. I made that's basically in ears with the music box strapped to it. Uh, mm -hmm. That that's also another good one for for Morphogene. Um, if you're looking for yeah, it. I, I, I mean, like I originally got Morphogene because of its looping capabilities too. But I mean, it's good. But I think I need more, and it's like the intro um, tape loopers. I think those are really intriguing to me. And I actually want to get two of them. That would be pretty sweet to have like four, four reels. And then with Morphogene 2, it's like, but, you know, that's like, be that's, like two grand. that's like two grand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah every module's uh, like 600 bucks. Cost. Like yeah. 600 bucks. Like, God. I guess that's sort of a, a a pro for like the no coast and the no control and the Strega. Yeah. They're, they're like five to six hundred dollars, and you don't you don't have to buy a case in addition. Like you don't have to worry about power supply. Like it just it's, it's yeah. It's an instrument it just works, that works, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, versus like this, like in you know regular modular, you have to uh, build out the system the way you want, slowly and cost. Costly. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I got a bigger case, and then I was like, "Oh man, I'm gonna try to fill it up now," you know. But then I was like, "All right, wait." <laughs> like, hold on. It's like I just so I just bought like panels instead. I was like, "I'm just gonna leave it blank for a little bit." I mean, I I still have to get a handle on some other modules, so 
and I'm just going to try to be disciplined in that way and just kind of just master like the modules I have now instead of just like accumulating more, which is what is fun. I mean, that's the fun thing, you know, especially if, you know, you have the ability to, it's kind of, you know, that's the fun part. It's like just playing with new toys every time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a good strategy. That's what I'm doing. It's why another reason why that other case is fairly empty. Like these first two cases I filled up in a matter of a couple months. Cause I just mm -hmm. like, like, I think it's fairly straightforward, not necessarily easy, but it's fairly straightforward to design your sort of your first case in terms of what modules you need. Cause you need like, you need some sound sources, you need some VCAs, you need some like ADSRs, like some of this standard stuff. Um, and because it's Cosmo, every, every one of those is gigantic. So it fills up case pretty yeah. fast. So the first two cases I filled up pretty quickly. And this other case I'm being more cautious with that I'm even debating adding a, like a single row case up top for like utilities and things. Yeah. So I, I am taking my time at this point um, because I, again, with wooden rails, I have to be very intentional about where stuff goes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a good thing. And yeah, I mean, it's just like, I think module just, you know, back to like the no coast and everything. It's just like the amount of modules, and options there are, you know, was, it's just so overwhelming. I think that's why it took me a while to get into it where I was like, you know what, you know, I just went and I just bought a semi-modular, you know, it's like, I can't be bothered with, you know, trying to design this thing. It's like, I, I barely, like, you know, I, I think I did like years of just like reading up on it, but it, but I never took the plunge. And it's like, until I actually took the plunge, it's like when I, you know, got more accustomed to what's what but yeah um yeah that's that's i mean it, it takes a while to know what's going on and like i i didn't know anything about your rack uh at all like there's there's so many modules it's overwhelming for me to like i don't know start looking into it but uh cosmo is like <laughs> i think there's like 30 total modules or something like that and half of them are from look mom no computer and the other half are from like random people uh, mm -hmm. on the forums and most of those are like just the usual diy your rack modules just in a bigger format uh, so that was easy for me to grasp onto and from there now i've been hanging out here with people like benjamin uh i'm learning a lot a lot about actual mm -hmm. euro rack modules beyond the three i have yeah and i think it's like overall it's just like the more you just experiment it's like i mean it's it's just like a work in progress right so yeah i sent an invite to tim code we'll see we'll see if they pop on too um, okay and yeah the cauldron of bats the 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 quarter inch jacks are part of the appeal, although I've uh, there's a couple people on the forums that I know of that instead of using quarter inch jacks, they use uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks. And what they do is on like the look mom, no computer modules, they just put a washer in so that, that they don't fall through the holes. Um, but I think that makes a lot of sense actually. Like the cables are cool bigger like I can use the same cable for my guitar as I can for the modular great and they're easier to find in longer lengths I think but it's hard when you're trying to connect it to like your rack modules or like uh, some of the gear I have over here is semi-modular or like the the micro freak has some CV inputs and outputs so like to connect those basically I'm, I've just got like a gajillion of these stupid adapters yeah that you never have enough of right when you need them. so uh i can see i can see uh wanting to do cosmo format but using this sm the smaller cables would be i think ideal but the big knobs are, are are there's no contest it's so much more fun to use and and i think easier to use like euro rack modules like you can you can see this like if you have a few modules and you turn something that has a smaller knob versus a bigger knob you'll feel a very big difference in how easy it is to turn which makes it 
So you can like turn it faster with bigger knobs or, or more accurately if you're trying to fine tune something, but I, I like the, the larger form factor just for that. And it's easier to solder together, less surface mount. Yeah. So, oh, sounds like Tim Coates going to pop on too. Oh, sweet. Uh, knobs also they're they're probably my most expensive component outside of potentiometers. They're hard to find good ones that I like, uh, locally sourced. Oh, cool. Aren't there like the standard like knobs that Moog uses? And oh, hey, hello. We can hear you. Perfect. You can hear me? Yeah. Good, got yeah. First try. Better than me. I think we tried. I, I just reconnected three times and then it just. Oh, wait, I have to mute. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting a delay, like a mimeo phone thing here going on because I've got the uh, YouTube and. Oh yeah, you gotta yeah. turn off the YouTube uh, video. <laughs> That's cool. All right, we have enthusiastic electrons too. All right. Hello. Hello. Hey, welcome. Who are you? And Thank you. What was the last CD that you listened to in a car? I'm uh, Tim, aka Tim Code, aka Enthusiastic Electrons, and um, I don't have a lot of CDs. But I actually, it was pretty much exactly a year ago um, that I went to a uh, Sarah Bell Reed was showing a doing a demonstration of playing her flugelhorn into a max with a, a bukla and all sorts of things happening at a at perfect circuit. Bought a CD, put it in the car, and it's probably still in there. So, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that's why I liked that question is it's really what CD is stuck in your car right now. <laughs> right. I also have some Tibetan monk music, I think, that I, uh, I like stopped for some coffee in Topanga Canyon once, and I was like, I want some Tibetan monk music. So it's a hippie shop, so I bought that. Just for a relaxing yeah, ride. Good. Yeah. yeah. I could vibe with that on a long drive. Yeah, it seems like perfect desert road trip music. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, no, it's, it's been great hearing um, hearing you talk about all of this uh, these things. I've got the um, the No Coast I started out with that, and it was actually two years ago um, that I got into modular. Like I, I I've known about modular since I was a teenager. Like in you know saw the prog rock you know the big you know moog, moog stuff and whatnot and that was uh you know that was the dream but um it was like two years ago i was actually working on a uh my daughter's preschool had a, a fundraiser where they were doing a, a music festival theme and so different people different parents could run different areas and so i said i'm going to do the uh the electro tent it was like the Kid, kid of Palooza or something like that instead of all or no it was um, Kid Chella sorry kid Chella. so yeah kid Chella. so I was like okay I'm gonna build like I used to build a lot of um, like MIDI controllers and things like that for uh, for video projections and um, so I thought you know I can do you know I'll, I'll make a MIDI controller that the kids can play with it'll be sort of inspired by modular so um, so I bought a bunch of big knobs I bought a bunch of quarter inch cables and I built this big thing out of cardboard that was exactly all the, the fun you're talking about with the big, you know, the big patch cables and, you know, so yeah. kids could just mess with it and you'd press a button and make a cool sound. And, um, but, but when I was researching that, I was like, you know, I, you know, I, I should check out, see if there's, you know, modular synthesizers looked at. I was like, does that exist now? You know, like, and I was like, Oh, analog Haven, that's like a mile from work. So I went in there and, you know, mind was blown. I was like, this exists now. And then my work moved to right near perfect circuit. And uh, oh, sweet. so, yeah, so anyway, the, uh, you know, so I got, I started out with a no coast um, and my idea was, I just wanted to have something that was very small and performable. And I want to start performing again. Cause I used to play keys long ago, like jazz, um, like in college and I haven't really performed since then. So the idea was start with a no coast and then build just a very small improv performance setup around that. So I got the uh, 48 HP, 4ms pod and um and they go they go really it sort of it matches and so that was that's what i was talking about with the idea with the case is um at this point i now have more modules and so i've got it you know my i have two pods they're full lunchbox it's full I've got 
modules just piling up. So, um, so the idea is to have like a 126 HP, like seven U or six U case, but then within that case, um, have a space for the no coast and the no control, um, where they'd be sort of slightly raised. Maybe they're held in with Velcro or something, you know, to hold them in. So they're basically part of the rack. So the entire thing can be, you know, moved, patched, um, but they're not like, I'm not going to, you know, mess with trying to actually have them rack mounted. So that's, that's cool. It's my, my idea. So it would basically be the same sort of a similar width to this keyboard. So it's, a, it's mm -hmm. designed to sit above the keyboard and be part of that, that sort of setup. Yeah, it's I've awesome. been chewing on something like that for for them. Like I'm I'm in no rush to get them, but like uh, this this base I designed for my I built for my my rack with the speakers in it. That front panel is mm -hmm. loose. Like I can pop it out and swap it out, and I think it might just be the exact right size or even a slightly taller than those. So I could theoretically make a panel, tape them, bolt them, whatever, and mm -hmm. then slide it in when I want to use them. So. I think it's a smart move. Like I, I rather enjoy um, those interfaces that are not particularly like it's. It's fun to use things that are a little more expressive than a keyboard, even though a yeah. keyboard's great. Right, the, like uh, the Micro Freak, I love, and it's I think just the start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this uh, is when I was. Um, I had some uh, SQ ones. And those are, you know, they're, they're great little synthesizers. They're, you know, inexpensive and really versatile for being so small. You yeah. do a lot of different things. Um, and uh, and then I was like, yeah, I'd like a more, you know, something that's more expressive. So I was looking at Renee, um, is it pretty much almost exactly your, I guess it was a little less than a year ago. Look, I was like, Renee, I was like, that's kind of, you know, it's, it's more expensive than I really want to spend. I also don't have any rack space for it. That's, you know, huge. And then, uh, you know, I just played with, um, the Pittsburgh, um, what was their new one last year? Metropolis. The Lifeform. Lifeforms. No, it wasn't Lifeform. It was like they had the. It was the new um, voltage, uh, voltage research lab, something oh, like voltage that. Voltage yeah. research. Yeah. yeah, that one. And the, but the keyboard for or the touch controller for it, I really like. And that probably, I think that predates it. It might be a Lifeforms one, but it's like a set of five and five touch plates, which can be mm -hmm. sequenced. And I really liked that. I played with that, and there's some something about it that I really, really liked. Um, so I was looking at all those and I thought, you know, the, these are all there, you know, maybe I could build my own with, you know, like a teensy or something like that. And like the next day, the no control was announced, I said, that's, <laughs> you know, cause it was good to go with a no coast anyway. So I was like, that's, you know, and I love yeah. it. It is, it is so expressive and it is, you know, sort of you find things that you don't necessarily, uh, expect. So, because it is all so fuzzy, there's no, you know, there's no quantizing of anything. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. That makes me want that that controller <laughs> yeah yeah but i don't have enough outlets my, my dilemma that's my dilemma <laughs> right. right now right <laughs> you were looking at cases too bandit lou right like what what size cases were you looking at so i have these three uh skiffs like um an 84 and two 104 skiffs and i was like i'm just gonna get skiffs and just have them independent. And I mean, as you can see, like everything is kind of put away. Like the skiffs are back there. Like I don't, like I used to have like my previous apartments and studios, I would have everything out like all the time. Like, yeah, I can just make stuff anytime I want. But I think um, it's just a little overwhelming, at, at least for my process. Like it just became too overwhelming where I was just like, you know what, I'm just not even gonna use those. I'm just gonna use the things that I like anyways. So it's kinda like everything's getting dusty. It's like might as well just put them away. So I just started putting things away. And you know, when I was getting uh, more into modular, I was like, well, what's the point of getting it a huge case, you know? I, I really don't have the real estate to kinda leave it out anyways. So I was like, I'll just get these little skits and they'll be independent and then the idea is when I make music, it would be really deliberate on what I use, the tools I use, and, you know, it's kind of like the first world problem is, like, oh, you need limitations to make music, which is a, a good a good thing to have, I guess. But, you know, so that's the idea. But, you know, as I was, you know, doing more live streams on EMS, you know, I would put stuff away, I'd unpatch everything, and then... Or let's say like I took out a skiff and I'll start making stuff like, oh, I really 
wish I had another oscillator or, you know, I really wish I had the morphogene with me. It's like, all right, I got to take it out, you know, make room for an outlet to like plug in. And it just became like, you know, then like readjust like my desk. And it's like, you know, I just want everything one freaking thing. And just like one outlet, or in this case, it's two. So it's better than three. Um, and it's just like where I can just access the modules that I want. Um, but at least I can put it away. So I settled with, I mean, I've been waiting for the IntelliGel stuff, but I can't, you know, can't get my hands on them. They're like sold out everywhere all the time. Um, and then I was looking at like the Pittsburgh structure too, but it's, I mean, they're like, it's like the bigger cases. I was looking for something that was a 12 U, at least nine, um, or 12. And like everything is like furniture grade like thing you know and, yeah and i mean you know they're quite expensive too and i you know and you know going back to you know power it's like i just wanted something that had clean power and good power it's like one of my at least something on one of my make noise uh skits with one module like i just get like this weird like high-pitched like whine and you know, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, depending how I plug stuff in. So it's essentially a ground, there's a ground loop somewhere. And, but anyways, yeah, I settled with the, what was it, the MDLR. There's, they have like a compact travel case. And it's uh, it's a 12 u 90, I think 94 HP. I just bought it. <laughs> so I oh, know. Cool. Their stuff looks great. <laughs> I, yeah, I... Yeah. But it's like, I mean, it's just so expensive. You know, I think if I was looking for something that would, you know, you know, I'm in a rental right now um, with my wife and we're, we're going to be moving around. And it's just like the idea, you know, we've been at this place for um, three years now. And just like the idea of moving, just especially like all of my my music here, it's like when the movers come, you know, we, we, we got movers for the first time on our last move because, like, we just started, you know, once we got married, we just started accumulating stuff. It's like, I don't want them to touch any of my, my music stuff. It's like, I'd rather just throw it into my car, make the trips myself, you know, and it's just, like, the thought of moving, like, a huge modular system just gives me a lot of anxiety for whatever reason. So, it's like, I just want a case that I can just fold up and pick up. So, you know paid premium for it but i think i think it'll be it'll be good that's cool and that's pretty cool yeah trying to not buy more modules to fill it up i think that's the that's the real struggle right there <laughs> <laughs> it's like ooh, i got another like you know 100 hp it's like what can i can i put in there you know <laughs> you know i, I like i've i started out with just a few you know just like the little pod and then another pod and like i keep buying blank panels that i like but i just never have enough space to use them you know and it's not not that i <laughs> yeah. have so many modules it's just i have such tiny cases you know so just yeah, find some good blank perfect. panels and you know savor them <laughs> yeah i'll just super glue them on i'll You're never right. take them <laughs> off <laughs> like oh well i can't get them off i guess that's just you know can't get can't get that module yeah. yeah we actually just moved and um recently and i fit that's that is one nice thing it would be nice to have a case that you could just close up and move but on the other hand all the little ones they all just sort of fit into a little you know vintage yeah frame, like an old suitcase we had and so that was let's move that by itself but i mean mine are a suitcase size like this one has a handle even that pulls nice up. you have a case for it that or a cover that goes on no but uh, i guess you'd case, make one right yeah i could make one and uh, yeah. that's that's maybe on my to-do list, but I designed it in a way that nothing sticks out beyond the edge of the case. Um, it's still not like the same as having an actual cover. Actually, that's not true. The door stopper sticks out. No, no I didn't anticipate having a door stopper attached to my modular, but. Nice. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know I was, I've been trying to, I've been sort of planning like what the, what the case that I was describing would look like. And I was like, I'd like a top on it, but I also kind of like, I really like the ones that are just sort of just nice sleek wood on the outside and don't have any mm. hardware for closing a top. Um, so I thought of a, an idea where it would just sort of, there'd be a, 
like almost like a shoebox where the there would be a wooden top that slides on top of it and then latches on somehow, but you could right. just remove it entirely. Um, but mm -hmm. that you know this this pl case gets keeps getting bigger and bigger. The plan for that. So now I'm just like I'm just going to make a skiff with no you know no bells or whistles. Just like start with that, go from there. You just got to build out your wall. Yeah, and just yeah. make <laughs> your whole entire wall into a case. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can always go vertical, in. man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, people with like really tall cases, I'm like, I would get so annoyed. I don't know, it's like you, you have a step, stepping stool, you yeah. know, to go up and like, you know, like unplug stuff. That'd be cool. I have like a vintage, like an old fashioned library, like the, the ladder. Oh, yeah, like a ladder. The rolling ladder. <laughs> right. You know, so when I made the uh, this case over here, I, I did stack all three of them. Like, it was like, it was, it was this tall. Like,. <laughs> It's yeah. awkward to plug things in at that height, so I uh, decided I was going to go wider. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like I'm dedicated since you know being a, a keyboard player originally. I'm I'm sort of dedicated to the this form factor, you know, like the horizontal in front of me kind of form yeah. factor, and not the yeah. whole you know wall thing necessarily. I, I say now, you know, check back in a, a year, but uh, yeah. I mean, I really like the wall. It just meant. Uh, Two things. One, I no longer sit down uh, yeah. <laughs> at all. Um, like, well, that's good. Like, I got a chair. You can <laughs> see it over there covered in patch cables, maybe. Yeah. Um, and two, uh, I don't know. If I was sitting down, I'd have to, like, sort of... You, you've seen them all over YouTube and Facebook, like the, the synth... Uh, I know it's called synth caves where people have like the full U shape all the way around them within chairs reach. And, and this allows me to like, <laughs> A, I can't really do that here. The floor is sloped and B like, I, I, I try to just walk over to the thing. And since I'm standing, right. it's not a big deal. You gotta build a cockpit too, you know, like the one. Just yeah. I actually was thinking like that top row would be great if it came just like over me somehow, mm -hmm. but this is freestanding. There's nothing behind it. Yeah. So I'd have to like, I don't know, get some, uh, ratchet straps. I've seen some people like ratchet strap from like their table all the way over the top of the box to hold everything together. Oh Suppose my God. If it's like on the ceiling and you're just like on your back somehow, then like the cables won't, you know, they'll just be dangling down. They won't get in the way of other modules, you know. If, if you're looking for a case yeah. idea, I was thinking maybe like a used bunk bed would be safe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because you could just put it under, under that top bunk. <laughs> and then there's line underneath the, the bed underneath there with uh, just some big speakers. Here. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. I think with the type of music I make, I would just fall asleep. You right. know, just like, okay, I'm just. I'm just gonna fall asleep. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. I couldn't make the ambient stuff that I do lying down. I would, I mean, I could, but it wouldn't last very long. You'd yeah. be like, why is he still playing that loop? Because it's dark and oh, it's like always oh, passed asleep. out. <laughs> yeah, I'm gone. I hate to, I hate to do this, but I actually need to just step away for for a few minutes. Um, okay, we can. I mean, it's it's nine. We can keep going, uh, or we can call it. Up to y'all. Up to you. I'm I'm just chilling. I, I don't, don't, recently don't, left. Don't, don't make, don't stop on my. All right, go do your thing, Tim Code. We might be here when you're back. All right, cool. Thanks. Sorry about that, but thanks yeah, for having no me. Yeah, no electrons. <laughs> yeah, bunk bed synth is definitely like uh, on my list of things that I want to do at some point. <laughs> I mean, it's like now, like the electric bill too. It's like because, huh. like you know, you see people with like everything on, and it's like. You don't use all those. Mo I, that's why I like the skiff too, because then it's like, well, I don't have everything on all the time that I'm, you know. Yeah, I'm know. actually not confident enough in my stuff to leave it on all the time. I feel like this much DIY probably deserves a little bit of adult supervision. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you put a breaker switch in in your in your case too, just in case something. Something fires off. I I just have a uh, I can just yank the cords out of the back or the the actual breaker for the house is right behind the case so I can just start smoke any things <laughs> um, if I needed to but uh, yeah I I don't I think there's some things I can understand leaving on all the time they 
as far as I know, most synthesis, so most modulars don't use a ton of power unless they're doing a lot of digital things. Mm -hmm. um, and those, even I don't know a ton about, uh, like if they have Arduino base or whatever. I think they use a bit more power. Like my my oscillators with the tuner baked into them, those those use more power than I think just about anything else. Maybe the MIDI to CV uses a little more too, but um, mm -hmm. overall it uses very little. It's like point. Uh, I measured the whole whole case at one point, and it was like 0.3 amps or something. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, okay. so I, like, I think you could leave it on <laughs> if you wanted to and not have a, like the worst power bill in the world. Mm -hmm. um, like a, a fridge uses more than that by far. So Yeah. Wow, yeah, that puts, that puts things in perspective a little bit. Um, yeah. Let's see what what else. Uh, what's on? What's the next topic? I'm I'm looking at the list. We covered those. Um, By the, the way, circuit. I'll... What circuit? I was gonna bring up the circuit. What were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say I. I always like to plug my favorite. Wait, I'm unplugging some stuff right now. <laughs> you know. Because people ask me how I get, sometimes get my warbly sound. Oh, this what thing. is the Von Gone Ultra Shit? Tell me more about the Von That's way better topic. Let's talk about that. Oh, my God. When I... So they're like a bo little boutique synth company out of, I think, Cali. But um, they... So it's basically um, a tremolo vibrato pedal with... Uh, um, reverb but the cool thing about it and how i get like my tape sound is this setting right here random, random. i can set the vibrato to random and set a cycle and it sounds like tape you know with with, with these settings right here just just a little bit that's so but, good instant instant uh, variation that's great and it's you know because like you know sometimes you know there's like the the tape emulations um you know that people have i mean you, you can basically do it it's just you know a, an lfo right but you know with an lfo it's cyclic and it just sounds really repetitive but make it random it just sounds then it sounds like uh, an actual tape deck so yeah, that's, everyone that's... out there who's wondering, that's my my secret weapon. It, it's really not that secret, but it's, I use it on everything. It just makes, you know, it just adds character. And um, as long, you know, I don't really, I don't think I overkill it. Maybe I do. I, I don't know. Forstein said that, I'm, uh, that I love that effect. But what can I say? I've uh, it's, it's got a special place in my heart. <laughs> That's cool. I'm like already trying to think about how I would do that, and I think I'd have to use like a couple LFOs at least. Like my yeah, the, the bigger LFOs I have uh, have a lot of uh, voltage control, including the rate at which they're at. So if I used a second LFO to control that with maybe a random uh, waveform, it might might be able to get close to that. But I just I don't know. That's, that's I mean it's the, the thing I've been trying with at least at electronic and modular music that I've been making is one, make it self -gener uh, generating and not make it as um, I guess robotic and you know with, I mean with this pedal it definitely adds a lot more vibe to it but it's just like playing around with um, just variable waves and just using that to like modulate even like the sequencer um, you know it does wonders um, you know on the the um, matriarch, there's a, you know, the, in the modulation section, there's a variable wave, and I'll just route that into the uh, the clock division for the sequencer, and it just, you know, you can make it as crazy as you want it, but it just, you know, kind of brings it back to the, a little more human feel to it, as funny as it sounds, like, you know, like I'm a human programming a modular to make it sound like how I would play it, but I don't want to play. It. But I actually don't want to play it. 
<laughs> right, right. It sounds know. more yeah. organic or, or uh, yeah. It's it's not the same exact tone over and over again. It's got some yeah. some uh, differentiation to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, check them out. I Vaughn, think the only Vaughn, way Vaughn. I get that feel is is literally manually. Like you'll occasionally see me in a video, like like a hand on two cents, like tr adjusting the cutoff filter, or, like the spread yeah. or the delay or something like that, so that I can get that sort of feel on on the more ambient tracks. Yeah, I mean, it's it, you just need something that's more variable, like you know, like the variable wave, and yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's fun, especially if you kind of get a patch that can kind of evolve, and you know, going back to Morphogene, you know, what I'll do is I so I use Tempe, and you can kind of clock divide everything all over the place. Yeah, you know, and I'll just do like random stuff and just kind of then play a sequence um you know set the wetness kind of like you know look at like three o'clock and then just let the thing do its thing but i think you do with morphogene you run out of splices because oh, i have to figure out how to like work the automation for splicing where it's not like splicing like all the time and then it essentially just turns into a single tone and just like little bleeps but um but yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun to try to make humanize, you know, the the Eurorack system. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think some yeah. of the other things that are, are like that help with it, especially like in, in modular, are these like analog components. And it's not because I think analog sounds better or anything like that. It's just like uh, like these oscillators change with the temperature, right? Like. Yeah. You gotta let it warm up 30 minutes for it to be uh, pretty consistent. But even then, like, if I, because the components I use to build them are all slightly different, like I didn't measure the resistors to be exactly the same. Um, if I go up uh, an octave on one oscillator and they both have the same like voltage control as the other oscillator, the same oscillator, um, they'll drift just enough apart, like that you get some like phase just. Uh, just uh, cancellation and things like that so I think that that unreliability helps a lot to add some variation to the music I make in terms of like mm -hmm. slower sound changes where you can really hear that stuff and uh, compared to like some of the digital oscillators like on the Microfreak there's some really good digital oscillators but they're usually pretty much the same uh, that changed recently with the uh, noise engineering ones they added that those are beautiful crazy things but um, mm -hmm. for the most part the digital oscillators I have sound pretty like the same all the time I mean you, you know it's interesting um, I was watching you know like I've been trying to work on my vocals too so I've been watching like you know singing class and stuff like that and you know having being perfect perfectly in tune and having perfect pitch isn't necessarily always the best thing. And it's like when you listen to a lot of like really famous singers, they, you know, you have the piano, you know, the person playing the piano, play the notes and the singer, unless they need to hit the, the note, they're usually singing around, around that, that perfect pitch. And it, adds yeah you know adds character adds a little more depth because i mean you, even if you go and just like the harmonics like if everything is like perfect you don't really get the you know the subharmonics or just like the like you said like the phase right the phasing you know and that kind of adds uh more to the spectrum um because if everything was perfectly in tune it just sounds super clean you know kind of sterile almost yeah it's not so. it's not the coolest like the THX note, right? Like that note that starts with super detuned oscillators and then they come mm -hmm. into, into alignment with yeah. each other. The reason that sounds so cool isn't because they're all in tune at the end. It's like the stuff before it that adds that contrast yeah. to when they're in tune that makes you like, all of a sudden you feel good when you get there. Like, and I think playing around the note gets, gets you that too. Yeah, actually, I, I mean, I, I'm sure you've seen it, the Look Mom No Computer one where he had like all... <laughs> 
what was it like how many oscillators like a thousand one thousand oscillator yeah, mega drum. Thousand. yeah 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 i have seen that and i will say uh i think it's ridiculous and awesome but i get the same exact sound with the 10 10 oscillator version you can't tell the difference like maybe the other one's a little noisier but like yeah I think at I mean, a certain it point, it's just all can't, like, there's so much phase cancellation. Or, yeah. It sounds great. I mean, I I think it's something that would be cool to hear live, but something to hear, you know, on, like, a recording. Like, say on, like, iTunes, right? Or, like, you know, whatever. He made a song with a thousand oscillators on iTunes. You're like, oh, well, that's interesting that he did it that way. But it's kind of like going to a show and feeling, like, the bass and everything like that's part of the experience of going to a show versus listening it you know on your on on your ear pods i agree and 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 it's not the same even just having two speakers right like i think the magic of his is he could hook up like 10 speakers each to a different column or row right and just like the action of like the fact that you can't hold your head perfectly still just is going to add so much variation and yeah. just moving around is going to cause all sorts of weird phase phase cancellation it's i think that's going to be amazing just just to yeah. sit inside of those speakers it would be the ultimate asmr experience yeah. right <laughs> it's intense though like i can say like it's it's hard to listen to for very long like i i try oh, to watch yeah. a bit of the like 24 hours I, I turn the volume all the way down i have to turn all the way down and be like all right that's like you probably went deaf i don't think i hear any protection on it <laughs> well he had it really low uh okay. turns out like he had it like super low because even low it's like the most oppressive sound after a while <laughs> like, yeah exactly like he pushes you to the floor um but it was fun to play with on that stream i sort of wish like youtube had been able to capture 24 hours and for, for playback because what I was doing is I was loading it up in multiple tabs and like skipping back an hour and having both of those playing and just like oh like, really cool cool chords that way yeah. oh that's that's actually a really cool idea yeah so every new tab you open is another thousand oscillators you're here <laughs> yeah I mean it's um, like he does like a lot like he does a lot of cool stuff it's just like you know with like the Furby organ and and things like that yeah, so I think I've never really talked about how I got into modular, but it's entirely because of that that dude. Um, mm-hmm. But I didn't even care about like I didn't know about modular very much. Like uh, it's it wasn't mainstream enough. I didn't I, for a while there. I wasn't paying too much attention to to music or anything like that. So I hadn't like I'd maybe seen him around here and there, but I didn't know what it was. Um, and then I think I got I went down one of those YouTube click holes and got to like, I don't know, Bo Beats or Andrew Huang or one of those, one of those dudes that leads you to like, uh, Noir Blanc and all, yeah. all of the YouTube people that do synthesizer shit. And then all of a sudden I was introduced into your rack and I was like, there's no fucking way I'm doing that because it's going to be so expensive and it looks really hard and whatever. I have cool synthesizers here. Mm-hmm. And so then I built one uh, because I, it just seemed like a cool thing to do. Like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get into modular, uh, I'm gonna try to do it low budget. Building it is just to be clear is not low budget uh, unless you do it like perfectly or you build a lot of things. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, that's that's how I got into it. Was that that crazy dude on YouTube with the Furby organ that I absolutely want to play i can't believe it's not in more videos but maybe just everything sounds like that song so <laughs> Where, where's his museum he has a museum where it's at right yeah the museum where, yeah. of everything else and it's in oh i can't remember the name of the town but it's in the uk and uh, oh it's in the uk okay yeah um yeah look mom no computer is definitely a gateway drug for sure yeah children of bats we should when pandemic is over we should definitely do a little field trip out there holy crap it's on my that'll list be fun. for sure yeah yeah yeah, I wanna, yeah yeah i'm hoping to have it, a synth bike up again for that for that <laughs> there's also like this other store where they just have every like just like every synthesizer that was ever made 
And yeah, there's a few it, places it's in Europe like that. Yeah. yeah, well, there's like Toman, which is like synth reactor or whatever that huge store is. And then there's mm-hmm. like, uh, there's a couple, I, don't, I think they're like synthesizer archives somewhere. or something, where it's like yeah. like the one that Lookum No Computer went to at one point. And a few yeah, yeah, that was the one. It's just yeah. like, it's got everything there. Um, which is pretty crazy because that'd be a fun one to go to and it looks like they have uh, a way for guests to come in i don't know if you can request a particular synthesizer but they've got a few out and plugged in and ready to play like it looked pretty cool and they let you record stuff there too which is i mean very generous very yeah 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 i mean i you know speaking on synthesizers like that's what really got me into music way back when i started I started with like an Alesis. I remember there's um you ever he- listen to Dorian Concept? You know Dorian Concept? You should check him out. It's um I don't know if he's he's made any new music, but he's like he's essentially a jazz keyboardist that can make a microchord and a Alesis micron like those little like synthesizers like like the stuff that he cranks out out of them is just like amazing you know like he uses like like every feature like he really just unlocks it and i remember watching his videos and you know i got like an elise micron and then from there it's just like you know you get into you know vintage synths and another cool (laughs) synth that i that i have is um the waldorf xt i think I, i i was talking to someone on one of my streams about it it's um the waldorf microwave xt that's a really, really beautiful synth. It's like, it's a wavetable, and it's, it just embraces the digitalness of what it can do versus like being analog. And it's, yeah, like you'll listen to some videos on there and like, oh my God, sounds so lush and amazing. And it's, and it's a purely digital synth. That's awesome. Yeah. We're gonna have to talk about that on a on a, a future episode because I wanna I wanna wanna hear some sounds and see it. Um, yeah, I think um like I of course I have those sims put away because I've been focusing on modular stuff. Right, I was like maybe I should right. take it out. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 not right now. Like I think we're on a good topic. Like getting into this stuff. Like I. I did not care for synths for a long time because I think when I associated synths with music, it was like cheesy 80s and that's not necessarily a bad thing but that's like what mm-hmm. i was associating it with like it never occurred to me like that i don't know prodigy and like half the bands that i liked were using synthesizers in really sick cool ways um mm-hmm. and that didn't occur to me like until i guess last year maybe so uh maybe a couple of years ago actually but uh it started when i got my hardware thing started when i got uh this stupid thing like on sale like a yeah. right like that yeah. was that got me started and i was like okay i've got that and, yeah. some other stuff, and it just escalated very quickly i was just showing yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're fun they're fun little things i forget how like i don't love how they sync with other things and i wish i could but like as far as like little group boxes that are amazing go, they're they're unstoppable. They're so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it escalated pretty quickly. Like it got a circuit, got it like, got a Korg uh, MS10 because I found a broken yeah. one on eBay, and it actually wasn't broken. I don't think the person knew how to use it. Uh, there was just like some knobs that. Uh, badly needed cleaning so i pulled it completely apart thanks to a few videos on youtube and and that was the start of me feeling comfortable tinkering. doing some tinkering and diy stuff yeah yeah i mean it's always scary pulling apart something that you just bought they're like god damn like, do i really have to <laughs> it was it was i i i can't say that it is anymore because like my uh partner got me the at megatron uh Odatron up here somewhere that's like this little digital synth uh, for Christmas and it, it's awesome it's like analog modeling and just mm-hmm. very 8-bitty at the same time but uh, when I got it like there was some funky stuff happening so I think within an hour of, of opening it I had taken it to the garage pulled off the jack soldered new ones on 
cleaned up some of the connections inside of it, put it back together, and it was great. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you gave it an upgrade. Yeah, it got a serious upgrade because it had these like quarter inch plastic jacks, which I'd never seen. Uh, mm-hmm. But but I don't think that was necessarily the issue. So, but I figured while I was in there, I'll put in some good ones, so I did. Yeah, might as well. It's so like it's I mean, solid. it's like my Technics uh, 1200 when I got it. You know, I you know the ground wire was like separate. You know, I basically took it apart, changed out like you know, replace the RCA wires with, like, higher quality ones and put in, like, a nice ground, little ground thing so I didn't have to freaking loop it on the preamp. And, you know, just things like that. It's just, like, you know, you just upgrade the machine. But speaking of DIY, you ever hear of uh, Black Corporation and their synthesizers? Black Corporation, if I remember correctly, is the... uh, They make, I think, uh, is it the... uh, Deckard's Dream. Yes, like the, Deckard's yeah. Dream, and I think yeah. they also are, are. Don't they have another one that's a uh, clone of Def- the, um, like uh, uh, the the Kijimi, the I think twenty six hundred or something. I don't remember, but yeah, the Deckard's Dream is their so. big one. Um, yeah, and I think they have multiple Deckards, right? They have the one that's a standalone, and then I think they have yeah. the synthesizer or modular module for it. Yeah, I think that the module's coming out, but I was looking at it because. I mean, it sounds amazing. I mean, it's yeah. crazy, it's crazy expensive. Yeah. But the DIY kit is literally half the price. And I was like, huh. But I think it's like people are talking about like their experience building it. And they're like, unless you really love sol- soldering and you're really confident in it, it's like you're probably going to have a terrible time. So yeah, I was like, ah. So- so it's it's there's a lot to it. I I did I read something similar as well, and um, I wouldn't hesitate at it. Like I would look to see how like how much of it is like surface mount components. I suspect a lot of it is through hole. Uh, mm-hmm. If it's mostly through hole components, you can do it. It's just going to take a long time because there are a lot yeah. of controls or there's a lot of um, soldering to do like to give you an idea is like one of these modules uh, like some of them are pretty fast but like if you're talking the VCA mixer I'm essentially building four VCAs and four mixers in one module and that mm-hmm. takes at least an hour or two just for the one thing so it's going to be and that's doing it efficiently and fast with you have if you have everything uh, so I think it, it, it could be done by a fair like somewhat of a novice but it would probably be a bit better to have some other uh, DIY projects under your belt Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of cool things to build in terms of synths and DIY so like start with modules Um, yeah your rack modules are good ones too there's a lot of them that are DIY Uh, surface mount kind of sucks but you'll get the hang of it it's just more Mm -hmm. of like getting the component in the right spot Um, yeah I think first step is to get space for a workshop yeah (laughs) <laughs> that's like I think ever since I got into like I mean I've always been into DIY stuff and it's just like watching people build stuff that's like I wish I had a workshop you know I do like little DIY stuff you know here and there but it's like like the really big bigger projects where it's like you need space you need like a workbench and you need like store your tools it's just like it is nice to have someday. space I will yeah. say that for like DIY electronic stuff, you don't need a ton of space. You just need like a few of those like uh, I don't know screw boxes, right? Like the the hardware store boxes that hold little components. You need need mm-hmm. a few of those just for like the all the random stuff you get. Um, and those are storable like under a desk or something. I think I want to say like needless mustard or somebody has has like a whole setup under a desk basically but like my workshop until we moved into the middle of nowhere was the kitchen table um which is not ideal because you have to like take everything out yeah and then like get it all ready and then like do the soldering and like the kitchen smells like solder for a while and (laughs) like that kind of thing so it's it is nice to have uh uh, space for it yeah then you got to clean it up yeah, and, and that wasn't a huge thing. Like, my partner and I, like, she, she got me into, like, soldering and DIY stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh, 
it wasn't that huge of a deal. But yeah, you got to clean it up where you can't use your kitchen table. <laughs> and like it's leaded solder. So there's always like, should we, should yeah. we be using leaded solder where we eat? <laughs> and it's like, oh, should I do it now? But it's like, oh, it's close to dinner time. Like, oh, you know, it's like the timing of everything too. Yeah, but like uh, all the pictures of my disassembled uh, MS-10 were done on the kitchen table. <laughs> Nice. Since, since then, I upgraded a bit. Um, yeah. All right. I think I'm getting sleepy, and I don't know if Tim Code's going to be back, so I think we're going to call it. Uh, hey. t- technically speaking, like, I think this was the least technical issues we've had on a what the heck. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, yeah. I will keep using this next week as well like it seemed pretty seamless it was easy to invite people uh we didn't have to like do crazy things with loop back and sending audio places to both odd like obs and, and zoom so probably... yeah the, the audio the quality is good too yeah wow. that's good it's usable uh, as as with all of my tests i'll probably go back and listen to it later yeah it feels really professional but like it's all just baked into this thing. Like I can click this and like, now you're real big and I'm real small and like it does the animations yeah. and all that cool stuff. So yeah, I'm digging it. Cool. cool. All right. Thank all you right. so much well, for coming on. Uh, I'm nice chatting. The, the outro, <laughs> which I made. It's not very sleepy time, but whatever. It's good enough. It's all right. I'm, I'm <laughs> still, I'm still awake. <laughs> uh, huh. I right, have a good night, man. As you, you take too. us out. Yeah. Peace. Later.